In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a new session, import, edit, and then export with Capture One Pro. Hopefully this should help you to get up to speed with this superb software. If you would like to check out Capture One, then please see the link below. And if you found this video useful, then please like and subscribe. To start with, you'll need somewhere to import your images to. This will either be a session or a catalog. I personally prefer and use sessions. And here you can see at the moment I have a default session open. I like sessions because they're portable and very flexible. And for the sake of this tutorial, I'll show you how to make a new session. You may want a separate session for a specific job or event. All we do is go to File and New Session. Then in the name, type the name of your session. So I'll call this Tutorial Session. And here you can choose the location on your drive where you'd like your session to live. All you have to do is click on these three dots and it will open the file browser for you to choose your location, like so. I'll just use my default pictures folder. Templates allow you to have a user-defined set of collections, which we won't bother with here for this tutorial. These are the standard folders that will appear in your session. They're actual physical folders on your drive. They're the default working folders for a session. Click OK and give it a couple of seconds to create the session. And here we are, tutorial session. OK, so let's go over to the library tab. And here we can see our session. And we have a capture folder, selects folder, output folder and trash folder. These are not just names, they are physical folders on the disk. This is a big strength of sessions. We can take a look at the actual folders for the session by going into my pictures folder and choosing tutorial session. And here we have our various session folders. Our images will be imported into the capture folder. All of the adjustments will live in the session folder too, which is why they are extremely portable. The next thing we want to do is to import some images. If you insert a memory card or connect a camera whilst you're in Capture One, it should bring up the import dialog automatically. Now my camera is already on and already connected, so I'm going to use the import icon, which is here, this down arrow. Up pops the import dialog, and here are the images, which we can scroll through like so. Here you can select the images you wish to import. You can import single images, just select one. It will say import one image. Or holding down control, you can select separate Im individual images as a group. Here it will import five separate images. Or import a range of images. Click the first one, then hold shift and click the last one in the range, which is very handy. You can resize the window, like so. And also resize your thumbnails here. You can get a good clear view of your images and decide which ones you want to import. We also have various import options. The options will be remembered by Capture One so you won't have to set them again unless you want to. Import from, this is the source. Now it remembered the drive from a last import but if in your case it doesn't then select it from this drop down here. You can also include subfolders and exclude duplicates. The default import location for a session will be its capture folder, this folder here. And then you can select subfolders, etc. You can also choose a backup location so you have a second copy of the imported images. You may want to store your RAWs for safety. Next to naming, you can rename your images on import, which is really nice if you'd like your images to have the name of the job or the event. We won't this time, for now we'll just leave it as image name, which means that the images will have the same name as they are on the source drive. Metadata, you can add your own copyright and description here. As you can see, my copyright is Scott Williams Photography. So the metadata will contain that on import. File info allows you to view information on the source images. Just click on an image and you get to see the information for that image. Then adjustments, auto adjust, 
Caption One will try to auto adjust the image to something that it thinks looks good. And include existing adjustments will include any adjustments that your camera has made to the image. And that's adjustments. Now at the bottom we have a few more options. We have eject card, erase images after import, and the number of images to import. And then open the collection after import, which is set by default, so you want to be able to see your images. It's set to import just this one image at the moment. If I click outside all of the images, it will change to import all. So let's just select import all. Here we can see it's importing the images and it imports the images into my capture folder. Here the images are in the library strip and we can scroll up and down them. And the images are actually in the capture folder. If we look into the select, output and trash, they are all empty. And this is a physical folder, as I've said. If we right click on it and show in Explorer, like so, up they come. And as you can see, there they are in an actual folder in tutorial session and capture. And that's how you import your images into your session. OK, before we edit, let's take a look at the options for viewing the images. If we grab here and drag, we can resize the strip like so. And we can also grab and drag all the way across to view more images and resize the images if we like using the little slider here. If there were more images, there would be a scroll bar there. Let's just make them bigger to bring up the scroll bar. There we go. Now we can scroll up and down the images if we like. You can have them quite large if you like. I personally like to work with a nice little strip of images at the edge like so. You have various view options. If you just click on the little eye, you can see them like so, or you can see them like so. With the third option, they'll get bigger rather than displaying more when you resize the strip. I would prefer the grid view so that when I do resize it, I see more of the images. It makes them easier to select. You may wish to view all of the images at once and not have any viewer on display at all. Just go to view, then toggle off view or control alt V. There you go, no viewer. And then do it again or control alt V to bring the viewer back. I think we're ready to do a little editing. Capture One has a really nice way of selecting images for editing, allowing you to isolate them from the images you don't want to edit. So I can look through the images and then pick one for editing, say this one. Now if I right click the image and then click move to selects folder, the image is gone. But if I click on my selects folder, here it is. See the selects folder as the images you have selected. You don't have to do this. You can rate and flag all those things, but it's just really convenient, really handy. Let's go back to the capture folder and select some other images that I'd like to process. I could process them here if I wanted to. Now let's just make the library large enough so that I can see all of the images. There we go. I'll choose that one and then I'll hold control and choose one or two more, maybe that one, and maybe that one. Now I'll right click and select Move to Selects folder. They've all disappeared from the Capture folder and moved to the Selects folder. And here they are, ready for me to edit. Again, if I right click and select Show in Explorer, here we go, Tutorial Session and my selects folder and there are the images I've selected. A really nice handy system. Time to edit. Let's select an image. I think we'll select this one. There's a really nice overexposed image. Let's just select the hand tool so that I can pan when I zoom. I'm not going to go through every editing tool as it would make this tutorial far too long. Next we'll just move over to the Exposure tab and we'll do some basic editing. I usually start with exposure. Most of the time I like to center my histogram unless it's a very dark scene or something like that. This is an overexposed image, so bring down the exposure like so. 
until I have what I think is a reasonable exposure and the histogram is roughly centered. The midtones are generally grouped around the center of the histogram. Now for some contrast. I'm now going to have a look at the blacks and the whites. This image is looking a little washed out. I tend not to use the contrast slider very much. I prefer the levels tool. So the first thing I will do is bring up the blacks here, like so. And then I will bring in my whites. That's pretty good. It now has quite a bit more contrast. The blacks are black and the whites are white. Next up the highlights slider and so there are no highlights blown out. And then I'd like to reveal some shadow detail. So up oh, with the shadow slider like so. And one final tweak on the blacks with just a few sliders. Really easily, the tone is now nice. I think this image would look really great with a 16 by 9 crop. Select the crop tool. Then right click to select the ratio. Use this drop down list. I have 16 by 9 but this is where you would select it. Then grab and move the corner like so. Then select the image to move it into position. I could use any corner to resize but I want the full width. I'll just grab the image and move the crop until the bus stop is more or less in the center. Then when I'm finished, I just select my hand tool and the image is cropped. Looking at it, I think I'd like it to be just a tad brighter. The brightness slider will affect the midtones without affecting the whites and the blacks. So I can quickly brighten the image. There we go, a bit brighter, like so. Now I want to check my sharpening, so I'll go to the Details tab. I'll double click on the image to zoom to 100%. Now it's sharp enough, but for the sake of this video, I'll resharpen it, bring down the threshold, the radius and the amount, and then I'll set my amount to quite high and then up the radius until it's just sharp. Then I'll reset the amount to a point where it's just sharp. The worst thing you can do is over sharpen. Then just a little tweak on the threshold. And I think that looks pretty good. Double click and we're back. It's cropped and sharpened too. Now I just want to have a quick check on the white balance. So I'll go over to the color tab. And here's our white balance tool. It says shot here. I'll try auto first. Auto white balance can do quite a good job sometimes. Okay, that's not bad, but not quite there. So I'll go back to shot and I'll just reduce the orange a tad and the magenta in the tint a bit. And now we have white balance sorted. And now keystoning. Because of the angle, it looks a little warped. So I'd like to reduce that somewhat. Hold down on the keystone tool here and select keystone horizontal. Move this top left point down to the edge of the roof and the top right to the other edge of the roof. That looks about right. Then I'll move my bottom left point to here on the pavement and the bottom right to here on the pavement. I think that should be okay. And then click apply. And instantly that's much better, a lot less warped. Select the hand tool. I think that horizontal keystone tool has worked pretty well. Everything's looking a lot more parallel. Okay, we have our image edited, so now it's time for export. Right click the image in the strip, then select export. When you export, don't select originals. That will export the original files. Select variants, and then it will bring up the export dialog. This is very easy to use, starting with the destination here. By default, it selects the session output folder within our session, which is what we want. I don't bother with the subfolder, don't need it. This shows you the path. Export naming, for some reason I've got the word twit there. I will name it. Now I'll click these three dots and set the system default, which is image name which will export it with the original image name. But if I delete that and then just type in a name of my own, 
I think I'll call it Shack. The naming is very powerful. If you click these three dots, you can set it for image name, job name, job name with counters, all sorts of things. Okay, so we have Shack. I'm not gonna bother with a job name here as we don't need it. And next we have the export recipe. Now for the basic, I'm just going to choose JPEG. You can select different formats from this drop down here. The quality I will set to 100. You can reduce this for a smaller JPEG file size but with obviously less quality. Profile, I'll leave this alone for now. You can choose to output in any profile you like. And resolution, for now we'll leave that. Scale, we can rescale the image, but we'll leave it at 100% so that our destination image is the same as our source image. It will be the same size, well, taking into account the crop. Or you can choose different dimensions, width, height, percentages, all sorts of things for making it bigger, smaller, that type of thing. Open with, it will open with an external application after processing, after export. Then in Options, you can add the folder to the Session Favorites. Well, it's already in the session, so we don't need to do that. You can also export as EIP, an extended image package. I don't want to do that. And Notify when completed, it will tell us when the export is done. Now back to the process recipe. This is a lot less complicated than it seems. You won't have to touch most of this. Most of the time. OK, so File. Is just some filing information. Adjustments, we want respect crop and no output sharpening. If you want to keep the sharpening you have. Or you can go in and change to sharpening for screen or sharpening for print or disable all. And metadata, you can choose which parts of your metadata are exported with the image. Okay, we're all set, so let's hit export. It will show you the exporting process, then when done it will show you where it's put the image. We'll just hit OK and then go back over to the Library tab and click on the Output location. There is our image. There's shack.jpg. And if we right click and show an explorer, like so, and there's the file, shack.jpg. If I double click it, it will open in Affinity Photo, my default editor. And there it is. And now when you want to export or upload to your social media platforms, etc., just select it from this folder, the output folder of the session. And we're done. We've gone through the whole cycle. We've created a session. We've imported images. We've edited an image. And we've exported an image, all in Capture One Pro. 